This will be a tutorial explaining the basics of Minecraft and how to set it up for an academic purpose. When you launch it, you'll come to the screen called Minecraft Launcher. It gives a summary of the latest updates of the software and a bunch of links to various resources. Down here is where you put your username and password once you make an account. You click login and it will verify the update and then it will take you to the main screen after loading. Here's the main screen. It allows you to pick single player or multiplayer. In multiplayer, you can join servers, direct connect to computers. In an actual classroom setting, this is what you would use as a teacher to monitor students and let them play together. But for this trial purpose, we'll just be using single player. This lets you select a new pre-existing world or you can create a new one. For this demo, I'll create a new one. You can pretty much call it whatever you want. I'll call it test for school. And then you should pick a game mode. Survival is the basic mode where everything is limited, but there's things that attack, so for a school setting, probably not the best one to use. Hardcore is the same, but even harder. Creative is the best for at least setting it up. It allows you to have unlimited resources, and it's what I used for making the demos. When you're done, you click Create New World. And once it's done loading, the screen will need to render. And here you are. It'll most likely be a little laggy the first couple minutes while everything builds and while doing the screen recording. It's using a little more usage of my computer. But here we are. And as you move, things will render and will pop up. But that is mostly due to the limitation of my computer currently. Now for the control basics. Like many other PC games, you use the W, A, S, and D keys to move. W for forward, A for left, S for back, D for right. The space bar also allows you to jump, which you'll need to do to get to places. As you can see, I have an item. You bring up the inventory with the E key, and it allows you in creative mode to pick pretty much everything in the game. So I'll take this gold ore and put it here. This bar down here are the items you're currently carrying. To get out of this screen, you'll hit the E or Escape key. You can scroll with a computer's trackpad or a wheel on a mouse between your items. To place them, you use the right key to put them down. To break them apart, you just click with the left mouse button. If you no longer wish to keep that item, you can hit the Q button to drop the one that you are currently holding. Now for some more advanced controls, if you hit T, it brings up a menu where you can type. This is for a teacher to communicate with te student, his students or students to communicate with each other or the teacher. In a multiplayer game, it's a lot more useful than in this test. If you hit escape, it brings up the game menu. Most of this isn't incredibly useful for now, but if you go to options, it allows you to change the difficulty, which I suggest doing for students. If you change it to peaceful, it means there will be no creatures that will attack, which means you can teach without interruptions. There's some other basic settings, like controls and video settings, which you can tweak as you need, but not relevant to learning how to play. Okay, now I'm going to show you a potential educational use, mostly for kindergarten kids for learning how to read and count. So you can see here, I set up a little, basically a zoo, with cows, pigs, sheep, chickens. The purpose of this will be to go find a pickaxe that allow them to go find a hidden book that has the name of an animal. If they can read the name of the animal, they have to come over to this chest over here, pick up a sign, and put the number and name of anim that particular animal down. So the pickaxe I've hidden in gold blocks all around the level. I have a close one here for trial purposes. So they would just knock down and pick up 
this pickaxe. Then they would go find very similarly set up obsidian blocks that have the books hidden. pickaxe to open this up and there's a book it says pigs so now students will need to go over to that chest and pick up a sign Using the right mouse button, you open up the chest and take the signs and put it in your inventory. Select a sign, go over to the fence where there are pigs. As you can see, there are one, two, three, four pigs in there. So a student would then click on the fence here and it allows you to write in sign. So, four pigs and done. And they would do the same for all these other animals. Like I said, there's hidden obsidian blocks, one there, one over there. You can put them as far as you want, depending on how much you want them to explore. I just set this up very small scale for a demo. Obviously you can be more creative or less so for whatever purposes you need, but this is a small little example of what you could do for small children especially. It allows them to interact, have fun, and learn to read and write. Another potential way to use it for learning is to blend it with more traditional types of studying, such as outside research. Here I have six chests. This one with stone. Bedrock. Gold. Iron ingot, coal, wood. An example of what to do would be to allow students to make something from all of this and then to do the research on how that is actually made. This could apply to a geology type setting where they need to know about different types of minerals and rocks and how they're used in various settings. For example, I take the iron and wood and go over to the crafting table I can make an iron pickaxe, make an iron hoe, or I can make a shovel. These are just some basic things that you could make, and more creative people I'm sure will come up with other things, but allowing them to do some cross-studying between the game and then going to the real world and actually looking up how some of these things are made and how they're used uh, in the real world could be very beneficial and more hands-on. These are just a few examples of what you can do in an educational setting with the game. Of course, more creative people will come up with better things than I have, but these show you the building blocks and some potential uses for it. And in this type of open world game, the sky is really the limit and any teacher can come up with something to re relevant to their class. I encourage all teachers to take a look at this game and see if there's something there that they could learn from and use to educate their students.